Yo, what's good everyone? It is Chase XC here today to be giving you guys our SBN Saffron Battle Network Season 2 Draft Analysis Recap. And as you guys can see, you already see, you guys already see what our whole team is. And it's kind of stupid what we got, but um, we'll get right into it in a bit. But other than that, like I said, this is the Saffron Battle Network. And uh, this was originally made by EXP Awesome. I'm going to try and remember to put his name link twitter youtube probably even twitch in the description below because this boy has managed pretty much everything in the whole entire like process and creation of making this league he's made all the graphics so when you guys do see the battles and when you see the layout he made the graphics when you see the thumbnail he made that when you see the layout he made that when you see the like all this other cool stuff and he's made he's even made a few logos for like some people who didn't even have one so this man is like this man is doing the work and uh i don't think he's getting praise enough for like all the regardless stuff. you guys already see our draft um this is the trainer card he made us well he didn't really make it but he made the template and i did the rest myself so this is our team like i said but regardless we're gonna go through each one one by one like just a little recap of each one and uh may i mind you that through each of these poke that except for like the first three picks except for like the first three or four picks everything in this draft i drafted after the draft was over so i had to like Draft my Pokemon after after everyone got there. That basically my skip my turn was skipped like pretty much most of the time because I was really busy that day. And it wasn't until like directly afterwards that I was able to pick up Mons that were still there. And I'm gonna tell you right now, Hoopa and Bound was still not there because I picked it up round one. But Landorus was still there, Mew was still there, and like all these other cool Pokemon were still there. I mean like like directly from top to bottom, left to right, that's the order I picked them in. So you're probably Staring at that really tough, like, why the hell are you there? <laughs> what? The, what? Okay. But we're, but we're gonna get right into this. And, uh, you know, maybe you guys... all Maybe all you guys wanted to see was the sprites, and maybe you guys just don't want to hear me talk about the Pokemon I drafted. But regardless, I need to stop saying that word. But we're gonna get right into this. We got Hoopa Unbound as our round one pick. Very, very insane mod. I'm kind of surprised that they allowed it because i think they i think it was allowed last season but it wasn't too broken i can see why they allowed it considering that it's four times a week to bug it's basically 80 speed pretty poor physical defense so i mean like yeah every pokemon's broken but every pokemon has their has an extent to how you how broken they actually are so i've never used hoop on bound i realized that for something so versatile for something so powerful that this is probably the only opportunity i'll, I'll ever have to draft to draft something like this so i went ahead and picked it up and I was kind of debating Celesteela, but I think that was like the first round pick. I may be wrong. But we did get Hoopa Unbound nonetheless. Base 160 attack, base 170 special attack, amazing spin in 130, great HP. And it just gets amazing coverage, energy ball, drain punch. It can run Destiny Bond, Magician, which can actually come in clutch in some scenarios. Uh, knock off Hyperspace, Hyperspace Fury, Hyperspace Hole, um, Psychic, Nasty Plot, Calm Mind. It gets Calm Mind, right? Yeah, it gets Calm Mind. Um, Dual Chop if I wanted to. Um... And this is not my Z user, so I'll get to that later. But uh, I get Trick Room, so I can run that as well. I, Thunder Wave does get Taunt. I can run Substitute to like be even more of a threat. Knock off Ice Punch, Grass Knot, Gung Shot. This thing just gets a lot of coverage. And if I can just use it effectively, then we're going to be a really huge threat. Like This thing is going to be a threat to every single team in this league, even though I haven't really looked at everyone's team. But regardless, who cares? We got Hoop Unbound. Pretty broken Mon for our first start. But next up, who else did we draft? Who else did we draft? Actually, is that round? I don't actually, I don't know. Left to right. So we got Mega Bennett. We got Mega Bennett. We got Insidious. I'm gonna name Insidious because that's the most recent horror film I've seen. Prankster. This was like the this is like a low tier, really low tier Mega, and I completely disagree. Base 165 attack, 64 HP. Okay, I can see why. Base 75 speed, that's not bad, but terrible defenses. Absolute crap defenses. But realistically, if you think about it, base 165 attack, you can put all, all your other EV investments into HP and your defenses to make it more bulkier than it otherwise really shouldn't be. And with the Prankster, I know Prankster got nerfed, so technically we are kind of walled by Dark types. Uh, I was actually hoping it got like Focus Punch so I could like predict it, go for Focus Punch and kill it. But uh, it does get like Dazzling Gleam and stuff like that. Base 165 attack, I, like I said, does get Dazzling Gleam. Prankster Debond does get Foul Play, I guess Knockoff, Prankster Magico, Prankster Pain Split, Psychic Pursuit. Pursuit would be nice for other Ghost types and Psychic types. Shadow Ball does get priority in Shadow Sneak and Sucker Punch. Prankster T-Way, Prankster Tom, Prankster Trick Room, Prankster Willow. Like, there's just 
I think I think everyone is kind of doubting like how amazing this thing is like I know prankster is like I know it's technically walled by like other dark types but if you're like a Pangoro or you can catch a Zazen Gleam, like honestly. But next up, we have our third pick being the Wigglytuff. I'm pretty sure Wigglytuff was our third pick, and you guys are probably like wondering why I got Wigglytuff. But I'm gonna name it Nathan. We got the leftovers at the competitive. We got Dazzling Gleam. Actually, I'm reading off a different set. Ah, okay. But uh, we, it does get cool abilities like competitive. Frisk is really nice to pick, up, pick out uh, opponents' items. Competitive is nice for intimidate users, and on the off chance, I go up against a sticky web team. I'm like base 45 speed, so I'm already slow as is, so it won't matter. Base 140 HP, decent Spitaka 85, uh, terrible defenses all around, but uh, you know, this thing isn't that bad. It does get Wish, it does get Protect, it does get um, Stealth Rocks, um, gets like a Metal Mana coverage, gets Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Ice Beam. Um, does it get knockoff? No. Yeah, it gets knockoff. So that's really good too. Knockoff, Parasong, Pain Split. So Stealth Rocks, like I said, T Wave. And then, uh, yeah, pretty much, like, I think there's a lot of these things to do. I mean, like, it gets Drain Punch, it gets Heal Pulse, so I can Heal Pulse the Magic Bounce users, which would be pretty awesome. And, uh, it does get Misty Terrain, which I'll probably never use, but I thought that was really cool to point out. But other than that, I do you know, like, there's definitely other good fairies out there, but I just, I'm one of those people where I just have to pick out those really meme and, like, underrated, really bad mons, and then hopefully use them effectively and, like, prove people wrong. But yeah, we got Nathan, because Nathan, IRL friend, really good at Smash, and Jigglypuff is just a freaking asshole to go against. But next up, we got Noodle Arms. We picked up Tangrowth. Never used Tangled before, so... I mean, I've seen people use it before, so... I don't think it'll be that... I don't think it'll be too hard to use, considering it has a regenerator, so that helps a lot, too. Um, base 100 HP, base 100 attack, base 110 attack, base 125 defense. Just really bad Spadef and speed, honestly. But I can run Assault Vest, max HP, max Spadef, and... Kind of makes up for it. Even without investment in defense, it still does a lot... Still eats up hits pretty goodly. Pretty... Pretty nicely. Did I say goodly? Pretty goodly. <laughs> we got Giga Drain. Gets Giga Drain. Gets Earthquake. Focus Blast. Um, Leech Seed. Sleep Powder. Knock Off. It does get Morning Sun. Most likely I'm just gonna switch. Ooh, I got a call. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know. I, don't even, I honestly don't remember where I left off with this Spaghetti Monster. But we're gonna go on with the next Pokemon. So let's see. After Tangled, we got Cobalion. We got Cobalt. Named after the Tool brand. Because it's the perfect name. Cobalt with a K. Um... I see, base 108 speed, really good defense of 129, really good HP at 91, and attack and special attack are really mediocre at base 90, but it does get stuff like SD, Calm Mind, and stuff like that to set up, so it definitely has that setup potential. I mean, Rock Polish Life Orb could even be a threat, it gets Quick Attack, it's Poison Jab, it gets Stealth Rock, so that's another good thing, and the cool thing about Kabayan that it's other three Justices don't get is that it does get initiatives, it gets Volt Switch, so that's really good. And I mean, base 102 is really good. I mean, like, with base 91 HP, I could run, like, a fast, bulky, offensive Cobalion, which is definitely an option. It gets Reflect, so I guess that's cool. And uh, more than likely, I'll probably run, like, close combat. It gets Metal Burst and Magnet Rise, so that's, like, really cool tech. And uh, honestly, really not much to say about this thing. I mean, like, really, pretty much, I can run physical or special. So, really good mix into there. But let's see, next up, we got Victoria. Yeah, we're going to name up Salazzle. It's going to be a shiny female Salazzle named Victoria. And uh, this thing is hella fast. Base 117, so it barely go it's barely faster than those base 115 Pokemon like Ambipom, Azelf, Pokemon like that. Base 115. The only bad thing about it is that its HP, attack, defense, and spadef is utter crap. Special attacks decent at 111. Give it um, Life Orb hits really hard. It does have Nasty Plot. Gets a lot of cool tech. It gets like Dragon Claw, Dragon Tail. Gets Disable, Encore, Fake Out. Gets Flame Charge. And it even gets Knock Off. So there's a lot of things that this thing could run, so... A lot of cool stuff I could go with. Taunt as well. And because of it being a poison type, it's never going to miss a toxic. And I do have corrosion. So honestly, unless that Pokemon's status has magic hard or something like that, or magic bounce, it's always going to get hit by toxic. So that's definitely guaranteed regardless of the type. So that's really, really nice. It's pretty much its signature ability. So let's see, we got Drud again. I'm going to name it Dr. Dre, because why not? Uh, I've mainly used this Pokemon as more of a defensive type. I mean, base 77 HP, 90 defense, not really the bulkiest thing, but dedicated all into HP and defense. And this thing is actually kind of bulky with that rough skin, paired that with a rocky helmet, and it makes for a pretty good physically defensive wall if the moves you're going up against are physical. So not that bad. And, uh, fun fact, I don't know if they fixed this, but Grass Knot's physical. So, yeah, the more you learn. I'm pretty sure everyone knew that. But another good Stealth Rocker, so I have that. And it does get Glare, so Guaranteed Paralysis, so that's really good. It's not like T-Wave where you have, like, a 10% chance to miss and lose the game. But, yeah, uh, this thing also gets, like, don't sleep on it, man. I mean, Detail Rocks is normally what you'll see. 
and then maybe earthquake but this thing also gets like mold breaker so i could hit stuff like with levitate and then like uh, like uh, bronze i guess with earthquake and then also has sheer force i mean a special attack it's not that great but it does have some physical moves like crunch um crunch fire punch uh let's see um night slash not night slash um, let's see. I'm trying to think, look at physical moves that have an added bonus. So basically, Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, Rock Slide, so that could be a good option for Sheer Force. I mean, like, Life Orb, Sheer Force is, like, really scary. Like, you don't want to sleep on that. Gunk Shot. Gunk Shot especially. Like, don't want to sleep on that. Like, if I'm going up against a really slow Fairy type, and I can click Gunk Shot, Life Orb, Sheer Force boosted, more than likely it's going down. Because Base 120 Attack is nothing to sleep on. I mean, based off, I mean, out of the... Ever since I got back with Tank Growth, Tank Growth and Dredigan are pretty much like the really slow months. And then we also have like Wigglytuff and Bayonet. Bayonet's like base 75 and Hoopa's like base 80. So realistically, the only two fast months we have on this team right now, as of this analysis, is Kobayan at base 108 and Salazzo at base 117. So really good CP tiers. At least they're base over 100. So that's nice. So let's see. After Dredigan, we got Mew. This Mew was still here at the end of the draft. And like, I was willing to pick up Mons that were still there. And this thing was just sitting there. So, yeah, I'm honestly not going to go much about it. This thing almost gets, it almost gets everything. So that's, I mean, this thing has so much it could do. Base 100 across the board, like, Sophia is here. Like, I'm, I'm stealing the name, but uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty good. I mean, this thing, like, I don't know what to say. I mean, it gets Stealth Rocks, Volt Switch, U-Turn. I mean, Taunt, Tailwind, like, just, like, whatever you could do, you could do it with this. I mean, like, I could run, like, Baton Pass setup. Like, that's, that's awesome. This thing can almost do everything, and I like that. So, yeah, really not much to say about it. It's pretty... Everyone should know what Mew does at the point. Pretty much anything. And so we got Landorus. Not Cheer Force, but Sand Force. So I am forced to run Sand Force. But nonetheless, base 101 speed, base 125 attack, base 115 special attack. And decent defenses. Base 89 HP, 90 defense, and, 90, and 80 speed def. So it's honestly not that bad. If, like... If I had a Sand, a sand Setter, this thing would be, like, really hit difficult to deal with. Because... Sand Force gives it a 1.3 boost in Ground Rocket Steel type attack, so stab Earth Power plus 1.3, that's deadly. Really deadly. I mean, compared to Landorus, its attack I mean its attack is still higher than its special, but its special is like nothing to laugh at either. Running Earth Power is usually what you'll usually see. Or what it's normally run. It does get U-turn, it does get rocks. It gets defog now because of the new generation. I can run explosion. Gets an immense amount of coverage. Grass not earth power, like I said. Extra sensory psychic. Um, knockoff. I can even run Outrage if I wanted to. Sludge Wave, Sludge Bomb, Stone Ridge. I can uh, run SD if I wanted to, like if I wanted to be that real. And uh, overall, really solid Pokemon. I'm excited to use it. It's like the Hoop Unbound where it's like, it's really broken. That's why it's like not seen in most leagues. But uh, having the opportunity to use LeBron or Landris is a, uh, it's going to be heat. So let's see, we're getting into the final three. And let's see, we got Demarcus. I put Dragonite. So base, this is our, like, final pick. Because apparently we had, like, a surprise pick. And I was like, okay. Well, looking at my team, I do have Jodigan. But I don't really have a Dragon Dance user. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get Demarcus. Demarcus, I hope Brent's watching this. Because he, he always names his Dragonite Demarcus. But uh, this thing basically is kind of a... It's not a one-trick pony. But it's it's kind of normally run in, like, one, one perspective. Like, I've seen, like... I've seen like Spadef or Fizzdef multi scale with like Roost and Thunder Wave, and then like maybe Dragonets, but like usually you'll see like a D Dance set with like a Z move. And uh, yeah, there's this isn't our Z move. Oh my god, that's calling again. <laughs> okay, I'm back for like the second time. <laughs> I swear. Uh, I cannot. I can't do stuff on my own without being called like at least twice. But regardless, um, I'm pretty sure I left off on Dramarcus. Yeah, I'm not even going to talk about it. We're going to go on to the last two Pokemon. Next up, we got uh, Vicavolt. I'm going to name it Jacket because Yellow Jacket, and I hate wasps. But uh, I don't even know if that's relevant. But uh, yeah, really, really slow, but its special attack is off the chart. Base 145 is insane. Decent HP of 77. Decent defenses of 90 and 75 defenses for death, respectively. Really slow speed, but it does get access to agility. So overall, more than likely, you're going to see me with like Thunderbolt, Bug Buzz, basically it's main stabs, probably some random hidden power and some, I don't know, maybe Roost. It'd be cool if this thing got defog because it gets Roost and it's flying, but I can't really ask for much now, can I? But uh, yeah, really not much to say about Vicavolt. It's kind of like a one-sided thing. It does get stuff like Air Slash and Energy Ball and Flash Cannon, so like really good coverage there. And unless I'm going up against a Whimsicott, I probably won't be running Poison Jab, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And last but not least, we're going to go on to our Samurai. And speaking of Samurai, I just realized I didn't say who my, uh, let's see. Mew is going to be my offensive Z user. So, Mew is my offensive. 
And Samurott right here, Samurai Ifrit, is gonna be our universal. Universal Z. Actually, I I don't know I don't know if there's any universal or offensive or we just pick two. I think if we just pick two random ones, yeah, I don't think there's a restriction other than Omni Boost. But we got Samurott. Samurott's gonna be the new Barrel, alright? So if you haven't been keeping up or if you haven't seen any of my previous matches with the NCPO, I have brought Barrel as my meme pick. But I have pulled off some matches in some regard with SD does it because it does get simple. But Samrod's actually not that bad. I think people sleep on this thing. I mean, decent attack of 100, be, de decent attack of 108. 70 speed, not the fastest thing, but it does. it's pretty bulky. 85 defense, 95 HP, 70 speed def. I mean, get this thing up with the SD and run Aqua Jet and like run over the coverage you need. And it's it's, it's pre pretty much Gucci. Like, I mean, with Torrent, it's, it's great. I mean, I can run like Z Rain Dance, which is like, which would be awesome. Z Rain Dance or like Swords Dance. That'd be like pretty cool. I mean, overall, this thing doesn't really get that much. I can run, like, Z Iron Cell, I guess, or, like, Z Waterium Z, or, like I said, or, like, Z Phytinium, Z, Z Zacrosaur, Z um, Megahorn, Z Dragon Tail, Z Air Slash. So there's a lot of things. There's a lot of options with the Samurai. But overall, that is going to be our SBN Saffron Battle Network Season 2 Draft Analysis for your Pachi Pachis. Or is it? Was it? Yeah, your Pearl C Pachi Pachis. Pearl City Pachi Pachis. But other than that... If you guys are there, very much appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe. Very much appreciate it for me because I actually put effort into making these videos. And I know not that many people watch, but regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are still here, like I said, very much appreciate it. This was Chase Six here, and I'll see you guys in the next encounter.